3 on how to create a druid in the game Dungeons and Dragons Online. Uh, we kind of started the segment 2 about skill points, so I like to pick up from there. Um, the most important skill points for a druid are go is going to be the concentration, heal, listen, and spot. Now concentration, what it does is it allows the druid to continue to spell despite getting hit in combat. Uh, when, when a creature comes up and hits you as you're casting a spell, they have to make what they call concentration check to see if the spell is disrupted or not. And so it's important to get the most concentration as possible so that you can keep spelling despite getting hit in combat. Uh, diplomacy is not as important to a druid. A paladin or a cleric or a bard uses a lot of diplomacy and even maybe even a rogue. Um, the next one is a heal. If, uh, if a party member goes unconscious you can get a heal kit and try to bring him back to life. And also when you go to shrines, it gives the other party members extra hit points. So heal is kind of important, so I'd invest a few in there. Intimidate, for a druid that's not going to be a front line, this is not important. But if you are a front line character, you might consider this. Because what happens is sometimes characters go around the front line and start trying to... Uh, whack on the spellcasters and we usually call them squishies because it doesn't take many hits for a caster to uh, go down so uh, we like calling them squishies so you might want to use intimidate and now bring the monsters back to you to attack you instead of them but in our case we made a spellcaster type druid so we're not going to invest any points into intimidate Listen is kind of nice to invest a few in here because then you can hear invisible creatures walking around and so they won't sneak up on you. Uh, it's kind of interesting. There's like little footprint sounds that uh, emanate from the screen so you can say, oh, okay, there's something coming after me. Uh, spot, I would recommend to put a lot towards spot because what that does is detect traps. Uh, so you don't walk into a trap. It gives a little warning, you know, detect danger. So that's how I would distribute my uh, skill points if I was creating a druid. After that, you're ready to hit next. And the next screen is choosing a feat. And there's tons of feats, okay? There's two feats that you may want to consider at first level. The first feat is Maximize uh, Spell. Maximize Spell, what it does is it allows you to get the most damage out of your spells. So like if you were playing pen and paper and you are a third level wizard and you cast like a fireball, it would be 3d6. So you take out uh, three six sided dice and roll it. So the the damage range would be between 3 and 18. Um, but if you had maximized spell, it would say, okay, you get an 18. It's always going to be an 18. And that's kind of how it works in the game. So it's good to take maximized spell, but the downside of taking it is it costs 25 additional spell points. So you saw that you only had 90. So if this thing takes 25, it will eat away at your spell points really quick. So you would have to save it for a boss fight. Um, the other one I would consider, and is the one I would take, is Augment Summoning. Augment Summoning adds 4 to your, to your pet's ability scores. And that's, that's huge because they'll get plus 6 to damage instead of plus 2. They get plus, uh, you know, armor class and hit points, you know, so your pets will last longer. So I hope this has been helpful, and there's still yet another segment after this, so I hope you continue watching.